everyone welcome to level 6 welcome to section 6.1 the title of this section is understanding the timeline window now let's begin with understanding where the timeline window is in blender the timeline window is towards the bottom part of the blender window click and drag to see the window more clearly now let's understand why do we need a timeline window in blender or what does a timeline window do in blender timeline window is a place where all the keyframes that we assign to an object in order to animate it is represented so we can see all the keyframes that we have added to different objects or a single object on the timeline window now let's understand what is a keyframe in the timeline window you can see that you have a diamond shape in yellow color now this diamond shape is referred to as a keyframe in blender now what is the significance of a keyframe in blender now before we understand that let's try understanding the word keyframe we have all heard frames per second it basically means the still images that you can see per second so keyframes are basically variables that store the location or the position of the object at a particular time instant or it can also store more information regarding the movement of the object so let's talk more about assigning a keyframe to an object to assign a keyframe we need to select the object then we can use a shortcut wherein we click on the i button of the keyboard where we can insert different keyframes using the insert keyframe menu now as a beginner we can click any of these things now let's learn more about the insert keyframe menu the first one stands for location so let's say i want to animate the movement of a car from a position to b position so then we use the location keyframe menu and let's say i want to rotate the object at a particular time instant then we can use the rotation keyframe and if we wish to scale it then we can use the scaling keyframe menu and let's say if you wish to do two things at the same time that is changing the location and the rotation then you can use the lock rot scale which is a short form for location and rotation now let's say i want to do three things at the same time that is the location rotation and the scale of the object needs to be changed so then we can go with this option and if we wish to change the location and the scale or the rotation and the scale then we can go with either of these two options as you learn more about the blender software you can further use or try inserting the different keyframes and see the consequent effects on the object Moving on, now we have learned how to insert a keyframe. Now let's learn about deleting a keyframe. To delete a keyframe, right click in the timeline window. On doing so, we can see the dope sheet context menu opens up. There you have different options such as your insert keyframe, duplicate and delete keyframe. Now that we are trying to delete the keyframe, let's select on it. Now you can see that the yellow diamond has disappeared. Now let's try inserting again a keyframe and let's learn a bit more about the keyframe. Let's again right click in the timeline window. On doing so we can see we have a duplicate op option. Using the duplicate option we can duplicate our current keyframe at different time and we also have a keyframe type. In the keyframe type you have different shapes and different colors. Now let's try understanding the necessity of the different keyframe type now let's say we are trying to animate different objects or we are trying to do different actions using the same object now to differentiate between different animations we use the keyframe type now let's understand more about this by actually using the different keyframe types in this video the shortcut for the keyframe type is denoted by r so on placing the mouse in the timeline window and on pressing on r you can set the different keyframe type now let's talk about the different keyframe types we have the normal keyframe the breakdown keyframe moving hold extreme and jitter i'll be demonstrating normal keyframe and moving hold 
for you guys in this video. So let's animate using the normal keyframe. We'll be moving the cube from location A to location B. Here A would be the center and B would be a location towards the right hand side. To select the object, on selecting the object it gets highlighted in orange. And then press on the I key to add the location keyframe. The reason we select location is because we are only moving the location of the cube. On doing so we can see a yellow diamond is added in the timeline window and in the property bar you can see that the location parameter has turned yellow. If the parameter turns yellow it means that a keyframe has been added and we can also see the diamond shapes beside x y z axis. On clicking on it we can see that the diamond has changed into a dot. It means that the keyframe has been removed for the z-axis. Now on clicking on it again we can see the keyframe has been added. Now let's move the cube towards the right hand side. For that we'll be using the move tool. Click and drag along the green axis to move it along the y-axis and to the right hand side. Now let's try moving the indicator. On doing so we can see that the cube suddenly moved back to the former position. So this means that to add a new location we need to first move the indicator to a new time instant and then move the cube to the required location. On doing so we can see that certain parameters have turned into green in the property bar which means that currently there is no keyframe added to this location. Now press on the I key then select location. On doing so we can see a keyframe has been added. Now that we have added two normal keyframes, let's try playing the animation. On doing so, we can see that there is no movement of the cube, even if the keyframes are present. In order to see the animation, the indicator has to be at the starting point of the animation. Currently, the indicator is far away from the starting point and also the indicator was at the last position when we hit the play button. So let's try moving the indicator to the zeroth position and let's play the animation. Now we can see that the cube has moved. Now observe one more thing. Currently the indicator is at the 40th time frame and also all the parameters in the location are green in color. This means that there is no keyframe added at this location. Now we have learned about the normal keyframe. Now let's try understanding the moving hold keyframe and after that we will also talk a bit about the rest of the keyframes. In order to use the moving hold keyframe we will be using the transform tool. Now let's add a keyframe to the current position of the key. Press on the I. We will be selecting the lock rod scale. The reason we select the lock rod scale is since we have selected the transform tool and since we intend to move the location and the rotation and the scale of the cube at a new location, we will be using this keyframe. So let's insert the keyframe. Now when you look at the property bar window, you can see the parameters of location, rotation and scale have all turned into yellow which means all the three parameters have been given a keyframe. Now let's try moving the cube to a new location. On doing so we can see the Y value has gotten updated. And when we move it back we can see the Y value again got updated. So to move to a new location we need to first move the indicator and then we need to move our cube. So let's try rotating the cube and let's also try scaling it. Now let's add the keyframe. Press on the I key and again press on the lock rod scale. Now since we are trying to use the moving hold keyframe, select the particular keyframe that is at the last position and then press on the R key and select moving hold. On doing so we can see that the shape of the diamond has grown slightly smaller. The reason being there is a slight difference in the normal keyframe and the moving key hold keyframe appearance. Now let's try moving back to the zeroth position. And now let's try playing the animation. 
Now we can see that the cube not only just moved, it also got scaled when it arrived at the final location. So what is moving hold keyframe do? So what does moving hold keyframe do? Moving hold keyframe helps us to retain the position, rotation and the location of the cube for a certain period of time. In order to add the moving hold keyframe, we first need to add a normal keyframe, use the transform tool and then use the lock rod scale keyframe and also we need to convert one of the normal keyframes into a moving hold keyframe. Now let's try understanding the rest of the keyframes. The breakdown keyframe helps us to break down certain key poses and the extreme keyframe helps us to add an extreme pose when we are animating multiple things and the jitter helps us to add a filter depending upon the requirement. Now that we have learned how to add the keyframes to an object manually, let's understand how to add a keyframe automatically. To automatically update a keyframe in Blender, we have an auto keying tool in the timeline window. Now let's find out the location of the auto keying tool. The auto keying tool is placed right beside the play buttons. This auto keying tool gets automatically updated on moving the object along different locations. Click on the auto keying button to activate the process. Now select the move tool and try moving the cube. On moving the cube, we can see a yellow diamond that is a normal keyframe has appeared in the timeline window. And when we look into the property bar window, we can see that the location, rotation and the scale parameters have been automatically updated. Now the difference between auto keying and the manual process is that when we add manually, we can select the keyframe either for location rotation or scale individually whereas in auto keying all the three parameters gets updated by itself though we can disable it later it adds an extra step now let's try further moving the cube and focus on the property bar as i move the cube on doing so we can see the location parameter in y axis has changed but even if we change the position of the cube a new keyframe has not been added the previous keyframe has been updated with the new values. Now in case if you wish to create an animation, one has to move the indicator to a new location and then one has to move the position of the cube. On doing so, the value gets updated in the transform menu where the location rotation and the scale values gets updated. Now let's try playing the animation. We need to place the indicator at the start point of the animation. Now let's try playing it. Now we can see the animation of the cube. Now let's try understanding some more basic parameters in the timeline window. For example, our play button. There are two play buttons. This play button helps to move the animation forward. Whereas this play button helps to move the animation backwards. Now that we have understood the auto keying tool, the two play buttons and let's talk about the remaining parameters. We have a box that indicates the current frame. We can manually enter a new current frame value or we can even fine tune it by clicking on the arrow on the either side to increase or decrease the value. Then we have the start frame, wherein we can manually enter the value of the start frame, also fine tune it just like the current frame. And then we have the end frame. The end frame decides the duration of the animation or the size of the animation file. We can again fine tune it just like the current frame and the start frame. Now let's talk about the two buttons beside the play button. This button helps us to jump to the next keyframe and this button helps us to jump to an end point and end point here means the last frame which is the 250th frame. Now in case if you wish to jump to the start point 
you can click on this point. This helps us to move to the starting keyframe. Let's say our keyframe is at the end point and we wish to go to the first keyframe then we need to click on this button. Now that we have understood some more things about the timeline, we learn more about the playback, keying and the view and the marker options in the next video where we will be animating the bouncing of a cube. And also in the further videos we will be learning more about the different types of editors that we have in Blender. So in this video we have learned, so in this video we have learned more about the keyframe, the different types of keyframe and we have also learned how to automatically update our keyframes in Blender. Thank you for watching.